Welcome back to the 2015 InfoWars Money Bomb. This is our effort to get to a million dollars of funding to take us to the next step. We said in the promo that you just heard, we're trying to take this to satellite programming so we can reach 400 million people. That's right, $1 million to reach 400 million people in North America and Central America. So we would like your help. Again, that number is 888-253-3139. We appreciate you standing with us through the years, helping us get to this level. We want to reach even more people. And as you watch this so-called presidential debate, as I say, it's a big brother, celebrity big brother version. Uh, we realize just how desperately alternative media is needed to this. We've had one question after the other where they go to one of the uh, candidates and said, Donald Trump said this very nasty thing about you. How would you respond? And then they argue back and forth about that. It is petty. It's ridiculous. Of course, we had Marco Rubio say this was uh, actually not a game show, but a serious endeavor. It is a game show. He it knows is. it's a game show. It is. Everybody is laughing about what a ridiculous reality show this entire thing has become. And I think Donald Trump has done everyone a favor by taking it to the nth degree this right. time. We have <laughs> seen it increase so much more into reality TV show. Now, this hour of the uh, Money Bomb, we have, a, we have a lot of specials that are coming through. This particular hour, we're running hourly specials. So for this hour, the 8 o'clock hour, we have 20% off Pro Pure filters. That's in addition to free shipping. So if you don't have enough money to support the operation just as a flat out donation, we would like to help you. You can help us and help yourself. We're offering free shipping as well as discounts. We've got 20% off Survival Shield X2 Nascent Iodine, 20% off Super Male Vitality and Brain Force and Silver Bullet. We have 15% off Deep Cleanse Secret 12, that's our B12 formulation, and Oxy Powder. So you get those discounts as well as free shipping. We count that towards helping with the money bomb, the profit percentage that we make off of that. If you want to make a direct donation, you can also call that same number, 888-253-3139. And of course, uh, Joe Biggs is joining us on uh, Twitter. We have hashtag money bomb 2015. If you want to comment about what we're doing here at the show, if you want to comment about the faux debate that's going on, uh, if you have questions for us, you can contact us there as well. Let's go back to the debate here. We've got Donald Trump on. He's talking about gangs all over the place in Chicago and Baltimore. These are illegal immigrants. I don't think you'd even be asking this question if I didn't run. Because when I ran and I brought this up at my opening remarks at Trump Tower, I took heat like nobody has taken heat in a long time. And then they found out with the killing of Kate from San Francisco and so many other crimes, they Very true. He's brought up an he's brought up an issue that politics. everybody else avoided like the plague, and that is a very important thing. And I have to give Donald Trump, Trump credit for so, it, right. just as I give Rand Paul credit for talking about civil asset out. forfeiture, talking about okay. dragnet surveillance. We have to have these issues that the rest of these clowns are not talking about. The only people that are talking about some very important issues like that are Donald Trump, and of course, that is the only issue that he has on his website is immigration. I do appreciate the fact that he's put out a detailed plan about what he would do with immigration that also draws fire but uh, we need to have other candidates in who are going to talk about different issues that's one of the things having Ben Carson and Carly Fiorina there they're talking about how they're outsiders but they haven't brought in any issue that hasn't been something that Republicans have been running on for 30 years straight out of the template and they they sound more like establishment candidates than some of these other guys, except all the rest of them, as I pointed out, besides Rand Paul and besides Donald Trump, have talked about the same issues, have the same position on all yeah, the issues. Yeah, it's pretty much the same deal. Like, once I get in office, my first day, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. No, no, they're no, not. No, you're not. Yeah, and That's every the time around, they say, we're going to build a wall. I mean, I think that I've been hearing that for like 20 years, and it's always going to be this guy that builds well, the wall. Well, as Joe Biggs documented, that, that wall has some gaping holes in it. Right. It's just a waste of money. Electronics, we need to use. All for show. This guy is one of the worst authoritarian. This guy will give us a nightmare world to live in in America. Chris Christie is an incredibly dangerous man. I mean, if you look at the positions that he has on his website, it's all about increasing the war on drugs. It's all about more surveillance, all more surveillance, everything to the nth degree. He can't get enough of it. Very dangerous person. Yeah, building a wall is completely and totally out of control. It's a waste of money. All it's going to do is waste. Yeah. Resources. It's going to waste manpower. We're also going to have to get more border patrol to secure the open areas while the workers are out there building the wall. 
So that's going to cost more money. It, it's going to be completely and total a waste because anytime you build a wall, what's going to happen? You've seen it with the cartels. They can dig a tunnel and go under there, and they can easily go over it, or they can do like they do in Hereford, Arizona. They can cut it down with a gas torch and then weld it back up. Now let's go to a question really quick. It says, can you guys please explain the dangers of socialism pertaining to Bernie Sanders, please? This comes from at Lisa, or Lisa Y. Abby. Well, socialism, of course, is really, as, as Bernie Sanders is putting it out there, it is a, it's what the founders called leveling. It's trying to bring everybody down to the same level. And as I would try to explain socialism to people, it's essentially, I, I think it is based on leveling, it's based on envy. It says that we are going to enforce equal outcome. We're not going to allow equal opportunity. The whole purpose of America that was different was that we were going to have a government that acted as a referee. And it would use its force as a referee when people were using force against each other, when they were using fraud against each other. But otherwise, they would make sure that there would be a level playing field. And now what we've seen, of course, is we've seen crony capitalism where you have people like Donald Trump essentially getting sweetheart deals from local government, making themselves billionaires of the public trough. And as a response to that, many people are turning to socialism because they want more government control against that. And yet, it's the government that people, crony capitalists, are using in order to make themselves billionaires. We have to have a vibrant rule of law. And I think we're seeing this all break down at multiple levels, levels whether it's the rule of law in terms of our, our right to uh, have a due process when the government comes after us, our right to be left alone when we're not doing anything, our right to be considered uh, innocent until proven guilty. All these things are taken away, and that's why we don't have free markets have not been tried in America for a very long time. We have crony capitalism that's come in, and Bernie Sanders is tapping into that frustration of the breakdown of the rule of law, of the corruption of government, of the inability to have good, honest people in there. They're using that then to further a collectivist leveling uh, mentality that is based, I think, really on envy. At Samuel Morgan wants to know, what's the difference between Perot then and Trump now? I hear your wife is a lovely woman. I don't know her. You guys want to take that? Well, they both want to steal the election for the other guy, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, you know, when I look at, at, at Ross Perot, Ross Perot uh, was doing us all a favor in terms of his opposition to NAFTA. Mm -hmm. um, and I had seen Ross Perot do some things that were altruistic. Ross Perot had organized rescue operations of people who had been held hostage. Uh, he had done some other things that were selfless. I haven't seen that with Donald Trump. Donald Trump is all about Donald Trump. Right. And so I, when we look at what people promise to do, I think it's important for us to look at their past operations. We need to look at their motivations. And we need to say that no matter how good their policy positions are, we have to ask ourselves, is this a person of integrity? Is this a person who is passionate about what they believe in? Are they going to do what they say they're going to do? We've, we've been lied to so many times. Republicans have been lied to by McConnell, by Boehner, by so many others so recently. Why would we trust somebody that doesn't have a track record that shows that he has any clear discernible policy uh, that, he, that he feels about anything that's conservative or libertarian or even socialist. He is simply about making money for Donald Trump. And so I think that's a big difference between Ross Perot and Donald Trump. Well, that's why it's so important to pay attention to who is on this stage and see where they've stood on the issues in the past and not simply just in the last couple of years when they knew they would be running for president. Yeah, yeah. I, I felt Ross Perot was a genuine guy. I, I disagreed with him on things like Planned Parenthood, obviously, and some other policy issues that I thought he had it wrong with. But you know what? I can get along with somebody that I disagree with. I disagree with Jesse Ventura on some issues, but I feel like he's an honest guy. I, I can't, I have to be able to trust the individual. And I would rather have somebody that is honest with me that I feel like I can trust and I'd have disagreements with him even on some serious issues than somebody who tells me everything I want to hear. And let me tell you something, these guys, all of them, not just Donald Trump, all of them are smart enough to know exactly what you want to hear. Right. We can all tell you exactly what you want to hear. We can do focus right. groups, we can do polling. We know exactly what you want to hear. We can tell you that just like a used car salesman. The question is, will they deliver on it? And that's why I think it's very different between Ross Perot and between Donald Trump, between Carly Fiorina. I think that is a very, very big difference. At Movie Star Web 
has a question. Can you explain how the military industrial complex affects the working class? I have a friend watching who does not understand. The military industrial complex, that was something, of course, it was warned, uh, we were warned about that by Eisenhower. Mm -hmm. And he said uh, that they're going to basically take over uh, they're going to take over industry, they're going to take over research. And let me tell you, the first thing you have to understand is the amount of money that we spend on the military budget. That is something that has a massive amount of money. Uh, so that affects you directly. You may not understand it, but whether or not you eat, you may not even pay taxes. But this country is becoming poorer and poorer because the money is flowing into the military industrial complex. And it's more and than the half budget. Yes, exactly. And the military industrial complex is pushing war along with the banks because they profit from war. Yeah, they profit from, from selling these weapons and material. And so they're pushing a foreign policy that puts us into war, puts us into poverty. Right. That is the direct result of the military industry. And it's not just a foreign complex because we see those military vehicles coming home to our own streets. Yes. yes. So uh, that's something that could very much affect you in the very real <laughs> exactly. near future. The founders yeah. told us that the means of defense abroad will become weapons of tyranny at home. And we are now seeing that in spades. We see these massive uh, military vehicles that are coming home, they're being put, uh, deployed into our country. And that is what this is going to be used for. Right, and that's why you won't see any of the candidates push that don't want war. They constantly always have to say, well, we're gonna go bomb these people, bomb, bomb these people here. And they're talking about this Iran deal. Well, now that they're signing this, this treaty with Iran, they're selling weapons to everyone else in the region because yes. they're all concerned. Exactly. Because Iran's about to start spending all of this money on weapons. And so they're like, well, don't worry, Saudi Arabia. Don't worry, Israel, don't worry. We're we're going to make billions of dollars worth of, of They're going to make billions of they're dollars off the Middle East arm rest, arms yeah. race. And then they're going to make money when those weapons get used by us, by the other people. They'll re resupply them. And let me tell you, of course, if they got billions of dollars that they're going to make, they are going to pay these politicians overtly and covertly to create these wars. Right. That's what this is precisely about. That's what drives it. It's the profits for the bankers. It's the profits for the military industrial complex. And I'll add one more thing, too, that you need to be concerned about. Look at what DARPA is doing. We have an out of control defense research project that is spending massive amounts of money creating some things that could create giga death on our planet if they get out of control. Just take one example for uh, that, that we've seen in the news recently, just this last week. That is the Department of Defense's biological warfare program. They bring in what they call select agents, deadly bacteria and viruses that are not indigenous to the area. They try to weaponize them, make them more deadly, make them more easily transmittable, and then they are incredibly careless. We have had every couple of months for the last year, we've had massive breaches of security where these things can get out into the wild. This may be the next 9-11 may be a biological warfare uh, escape. And of course, they will blame it on terror. All right, well, I have a question for Jakar Jackson and Leanne McAdoo. People want to know, out of all the people running right now on the GOP side, who do you think Jakari and Leanne has the best chance of moving America forward in the direction we need to go? Now, I know it's early. You know, we, we still have some learning to do on the candidates. Mm -hmm. But at this point in time, who do you think really has the best opportunity to help move us forward? Well, the one I know the most about is Rand Paul, so I'd probably defer more towards him. I mean, I'm interested to see what everybody has to say, but everybody has given us a lot of these canned answers, even if they're angry canned answers. You know, they're sitting there talking with their aides or they're talking over with their wives and say it this way and say it like that. And just like Dave was saying, they're doing these focus group kind of answers where they're just telling us what we want to hear. So thus far, I haven't really heard too many what I would consider to be honest answers out of too many people besides maybe somebody like Trump, even if he's kind of, you know, just jazzing it up a bit. But I don't hear too many people. But to answer the question shortly, I'd say Rand Paul at this point. Yeah, and I agree on that. I, mean, I get so many people tweeting me and saying, give it up, Leanne, Rand isn't going to win and, and everything like that. And all I'm saying is just look at the track record of how people have been voting, what they've been standing for. You know, he famously filibustered uh, the CIA director being um, promoted to that position until Obama could speak on the drone program and how it would be used here on American soil against American citizens. No one else. In fact, Congress was kind of looking around at each other going, huh, he's right. We don't have any laws in place for what we're going to do with the drones in the sky. And he stood up against the NSA. And I think that that's 
you know, he's definitely not his father. He's obviously kind of playing with, uh, you know, Big Agra and this and that. But I feel like when it comes time, if he is at the table making those negotiations,